Hey guys, what's going on? This is your boy Mina. Welcome back to another video. Uh, this is going to be episode 4 of the investing series. And today we're going to be talking about a favorite topic of mine, which is real estate. Real estate investing and how we can make money off that. Quick celebration moment. Thank you very much. I've reached 100 subs. So, you know, basically Gary V right now. Don't be jealous. It is what it is. But yeah, thanks very much for subbing. I really appreciate that. And now let's dive right into that video. So what are the types of real estate investing or how can I invest in real estate in general? So number one, which would be quite obvious, is actually physical real estate, which exactly as it sounds. Number two would be something called REITs, R-E-I-T. And we'll explain what that is. The other thing would be lending, lending backed by real estate. And we'll also talk about what these are. Uh, in each of these points, we're going to talk about how can I make money with each one. And number two, pros, cons, and risks associated because like we said, anything has risks. Nothing is all oh, millions of dollars without any downside. So number one, physical real estate. The thing that ex sounds exactly like it is, is owning and controlling actual real estate. That could include plazas, houses, single family, multifamily, apartment buildings, strip plazas, anything at all. If it's a box on land, it's real estate. That's all this is. So now, how can I make money with real estate? Great, you said what it is, nobody gives a shit. So how can I make money, which is the most important question. So with physical real estate, it's very interesting. There's three main ways that you could make money off. Number one is called appreciation. Number two is called cash flow. Number three is called equity pay down. So let's talk about number one, appreciation. Appreciation is this coveted concept that everybody's looking for when they're looking at real estate. They're like, I'm going to buy it now. It definitely is going to go up. That's basically what appreciation is. It is the thing that your grandpa used to remember in 1929, I bought a house for $75 and he used to diss on your generation, which is all cool, grandpa, but we have, you know, plastic shit that we could touch and order food and we get tacos in 30 minutes on our doorstep, but who's counting? Anyways, that house that he bought for $75 is now $100,000 and he's bragging, that is called appreciation, which is basically due to supply and demand. One other aspect of appreciation is called forced appreciation. So forced appreciation is basically when you get a property and you add certain value to it. So you build another unit on the land, you add a room, whatever it is, there are things that you could force appreciation that is not only due to supply and demand, and that's another way you can win. Number two, cash flow. Everybody hears this word and they're automatically happier. Cash flow means you get money every month from owning a piece of real estate. So how can we do that? Let's see how cash flow works. So this is a piece of physical real estate that you own. You paid 20% down and you got 80% as a mortgage from a bank. Now you control this piece of real estate in which turn you rented it to Mr. Steve. Steve is a tenant and he pays you rent because you, he, you own the place and he wants to live there. This is his rent. He paid three dollar signs. One of these is going to go to expenses because you got to pay shit. Number two is going to go towards your mortgage and whatever is left is going to be your cash flow. So basically whatever rent he pays, he paid three of these things. One goes to mortgage, one goes to expenses, whatever is left goes into your pocket every single month as long as Steve pays his rent on time. Sometimes Steve is a piece of shit, he doesn't pay, but that's another story. That's in regards to cash flow. The third thing, which is equity pay down. Good thing we don't need to draw this again because we already wrote mortgage here, right? Your mortgage payment is equal to interest plus principal. The interest goes to the bank as motivation for them to give you the money in the first place. The principal goes towards the loan that you borrowed. So you borrowed 100,000 and then every month, 100 bucks or whatever that looks like goes towards that. And that is called equity pay down. So you get your cash flow, but you also get a portion of your loan paid down. So when you sell the house or whatever, that equity is owed to you. So we spoke about how we make money and that's usually what the pros are. So now what are the cons and the risks associated with real estate? So let's talk about the cons first. Number one, it is not liquid enough. So it's not like a stock. A stock, you could literally go and sell it in two seconds. In real estate, you need to get a realtor, you need to stage it. It's a whole process to sell it. And it's usually not a day or two until you get your money. Number two is it requires work. So you have Steve as a tenant. Tenant requires some work. He has some needs. He needs management. You need to collect the rent. Yes, you could hire that out, but generally speaking, it needs work. Number three, it is, because it's physical real estate, is not as easily diversified. So in stocks, you could literally buy an ETF and own a portion of all the stocks in the world. 
uh, in physical real estate, you can't do that. Or you, you can, but it's much harder. Like for you to get a property in every city in the world would be much harder than a stock. Number four, it requires capital to maintain. You need liquid money to fix the roof or fix the furnace or whatever happens. Usually that's covered by your rental income if you bought right, but that's generally another con of it. Okay, we spoke about the cons, now what about the risks? Number one is market cycles. Property values go up, they sometimes go down as well. Don't believe people who say, oh, it always goes up. Well, generally, on average, it does, but not always because it happened before and we need to be cognizant of that fact. Number two is buying too high. Property values could technically drop and if you bought too high, then you're gonna be at a risk. Number three is over leverage. So because real estate has this magnificent factor to it, which is leverage, you could use some of your money, but then supplement that with 80% of bank's money and all of a sudden you control 100% of a property. That is a fantastic way to grow, but also it could lead to the fact of you're over leveraging yourself in some ways. And we could mitigate those risks and we'll talk about them in later videos. So now to the second type of real estate investments, which is REITs, R-E-I-T, which is Real Estate Investment Trust. So what does that mean? So this is what it looks like. We have here a company, let's call it G Corp, and that company is a REIT. So this company would typically own a very large and mostly commercial real estate that would otherwise be inaccessible to normal folks. We're like, let's call this building G offices and G mall. They have like a whole bunch of them across the country. And what they do is they rent them out and they make money, just like we talked about in physical real estate. G company will do all that work for us. So they're gonna be doing the physical part, which is owning these buildings, renting them out, maintaining them, and then collecting certain rents. What happens is they get deductibles, just like the regular ones we had, capital expenditures, they had interest to pay to the bank, they have other costs, managerial, property management, all that good stuff. And then they end up with some money here. So that's the, the profit that they turned. They are required by law to give out 90% of this profit as dividends. So you own 1% of that company, let's say they make $110, they remove $10 out of it. Now the $100 they have to distribute as dividends and you get a dollar every year as dividends. So that's another great way to invest in real estate. It is very passive. You don't really need to do much. You just buy it and hold it. But as everything else, it does have some cons and risks associated with it. So let's talk about that. So now let's take a little bit of a look about pros and cons. Pros would be liquidity. So as opposed to physical real estate, this one generally they're tradable, so you could sell them like a stock in and out of the market during market hours. Number two is they're pretty much passive. You don't have to do anything. Number three is they're dividend paying. So they pay out supposedly regular dividends annually and some REITs would increase the dividends, things of that nature. The cons, however, is pretty much the same thing, but on reverse. So management is not in your hands. So do you trust those managers? Do you know what they're doing? Are they doing a good job? Are they not? You don't really know. Um, maybe they expand too fast, right? Maybe they just spread themselves too thin and they're not able to handle it. Also, maybe they over leverage. So when it's your real estate, you could control. You could say, okay, I'm over leveraged. Let me stop now. But you can't do that with REITs. You have no control over anything. You're leaving it in the hands of the supposedly professionals and you're hoping for the best. Risks associated would be pretty much like the con list, but also add to it, you know, the market fluctuations and the tenant profiles and where they buy. And, and some of them actually get vacant land and build on it. So if they're building costs go too high and the rents, like it's all physical real estate related risks as well. Okay, now the third type. So the third type is real estate backed lending. This has several different types and you could get into syndications and partnerships and a whole bunch of stuff. But just as a basic idea of what it is, it is lending someone money with the asset backup being real estate. So that's your collateral. So let's give a general example here. This is Steve. Steve saw this house on the market with a market value of 120,000. Steve really wants to buy that house so he can live in it. So what does Steve do? He says, okay, I'm gonna pay $20,000 down and he's coming to you, Mr. I make all the money, and he says, can I get 100,000 to buy this house? And you have 100,000 in your bank. So you're saying to yourself, okay, should I leave it in the bank or maybe should I invest it and make some money? So you give Steve the 100,000. Now Steve takes this money and he goes and buys this house. Steve now has an asset worth $120,000 and he's renting it or living it or whatever Steve's doing, but he promised you to pay you back a certain return because you're giving him the money. So let's say that return is 6%. So 
So Steve now has to pay you roughly $500 a month every month as long as he has that $100,000. Sounds like a great thing. You're getting 6% return on your money. Steve's getting a house. Everybody's happy. And the, the beauty of real estate lending and why, generally speaking, it's considered a safer type of investment is because there's always an asset right here that is backed by it. So let's say Steve all of a sudden doesn't want to pay you. Remember, P Steve's a piece of shit. Freaking Steve doesn't want to pay. So you can be like, all right, no problem. Bye, Steve. And you take over the asset, which is worth 120. You can easily sell it on the market and get back your $100,000 and you're done. So this process that we saw here is generally what banks do every single day. And they do it for a very low interest rate. Why do they do that? Because they generally believe that real estate is a safer asset and their money is technically safe as long as they don't over leverage themselves. So as long as Steve paid 20,000, they always have that equity in the place. So your main risk here would be if this asset, which is worth 120,000, if it drops 20%, you're still technically okay because you have that risk here. Steve already paid 20,000. So if it drops 20,000, you're still getting your 100,000 out. But here's the kicker. If the market drops, let's say 30%, then you have a problem. Now bear in mind, this example is maybe a little bit on the extreme side, it doesn't happen every day, but it does happen and we need to be very aware of these things. Similar to 2008 sort of scenario that happened, properties saw a severe drop. So anybody that had a situation like this would have been at risk. So always do your due diligence on every investment. Don't think everything, anything that makes money usually has a little bit of risk attached to it. And that's perfectly fine. And we know it, but we need to understand it and take that risk according to our tolerance. Anyways, I hope this was kind of short. I don't know how long this is going to take, but any, I think at the end of this, if you're still here, I don't know, maybe three people are. One of the things that I really urge you is before investing in anything, just before doing anything, invest in your goddamn self first. Invest in this gray matter right over here. This never depreciates. It doesn't go away with the market. Well, unless you do drugs or forget about that. But generally speaking, this thing will always grow and will always appreciate with you and will give you the best return. So always invest in yourself first prior to doing any other investments like this. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I guess I hope it's not too long, but we'll see you in the next one.